Hi, and welcome to my short talk on nanochemistry. Now, nanochemistry, for a dictionary definition, is the synthesis, analysis, and characterization of chemical compounds at the nanoscale. Now, this means how do we make, how do we study, and how do we predict the properties and characteristics of compounds or elements when you shave them down or build them up just between one nanometer and a thousand nanometers. Now, now it was actually the famous physicist Richard Feynman who gave birth to nanoscience when he gave a talk called There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom in the US in 1959. Now in this talk he envisioned building structures atom by atom or molecule by molecule. But when scientists went away to research this they found they couldn't just do this with physics. They really needed chemistry. And this is where people like Jeffrey Erzin came out. He realized that you needed to know how molecules would interact with each other to really design the structures as you wanted them. But first, why do we need nanochemistry? Well, as it turns out, materials actually behave differently and can have different properties when in nanoscale than when in their bulk form, which is essentially like normal form, not in nanoscale. And this can range from conductivity to reactivity. Now an example of this, as you can see, is gold. At around 5 nanometers, it can oxidize carbon monoxide. Now that just shows you how reactive it's become, whereas in bulk, you can't even use it as a catalyst because it's just not reactive enough. A second reason is that you can build structures atom by atom or molecule by molecule. And this is called supramolecular assembly. And this is really, really useful as you can design molecules to do exactly what you want. One example of this are photovoltaics. Now these are used in solar cells as they take light and convert it into an electrical current. Now we had solar cells before this, we had photovoltaics, but what nanochemistry really brings to the table is because we built them for the exact purpose, we can make them really efficient. Another example are drug carriers. In the case of DNA destroying drugs, it's very useful as we have pioneered a way of getting a drug while locked essentially in a nanoparticle, while inactive, into a specific site where the cancer is, and then by giving X-ray radiation, it will open up and release the drug exactly where you want it and nowhere else. How are they made? Well, there are really two main ways that you can make a nanoparticle. The first is bottom up or synthesizing. And this is really building it from its individual atoms, its individual molecules. So this idea of self-assembly, where the molecules organize themselves into a structure, you don't have any influence. An example of this is solidifying. If you have a sparse enough distribution of liquid or gaseous molecules, when they solidify or when they'll nucleate, this means that they'll have lots of little centers and they'll clump to those. And now these form nanoparticles, but they again have their own structure and not one that we've really chosen. So how do we choose it? Well, we lead on to directed self-assembly. Now we can affect how these molecules or atoms self-assemble, and that's by modulating or varying the temperature, the amount of light or the pH, if it's in solution, the concentrations, if it is again in solution, and a real linchpin in this is templates. Now templates are sort of like a framework structure, and now if you're building through something, you can get things like carbon nanotubes and build through them to make nanowires. Or in reverse, if you have a nanowire, you can structure around it by affecting other variables like temperature and light acidity to create the nanotube on the outside. Now the second way of making nanoparticles is top down or fabricating. And this is a lot simpler. You're just breaking it up down from bulk materials. So you're grinding it up, you're cutting it up into as small as you want. Now this obviously is a lot cheaper to do. It's a lot easier to do. Now this is useful for when you're not looking for a specific structure and just want the size. So, a summary. Nanoparticles are very small. 
small number of molecules or small number of atoms, obviously in a solid state, as if they were a liquid or a gas, they'd be fluid and not a particle. One to one thousand nanometers in length. So that's one billionth to one millionth of a meter in length. They can be built up or broken down to. There are more possibilities for structure and for use when built up to, but when broken down to, it's easier and it's cheaper and it's quicker. And perhaps most importantly, there is a myriad of uses as they are super molecularly assembled. This means that you can structure them any way you want. You can design it how you want, for what you want, and for what you don't want. I hope you enjoyed my video and thank you for watching.